going somewhere, you know I hate losing If y'all was in the bank, I'd rob it just to prove it Today's artist is a little nostalgia-inducing hook maker from 2014 named Sage the Gemini. Although technically a successful rapper, ghostwriter, and producer, Sage is mostly remembered for the iconic It's Going Down For Real hook off of Flowrider's four times platinum single GDFR. On his own, he has achieved a handful of accolades as well as a gold album, a gold single, a double platinum single, and even made it a triple platinum. These days, Sage the Gemini is not as active as he used to be. So the question is, what happened to the man? Let's find out. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Sage was born around 1992 in San Francisco. Along with his family, he moved to Fairfield when he was around 7 or 8 years old to avoid crime in the area. According to him, if he stayed in the city, he would have ended up dead, a mercenary, or on drugs. Uh, rough, you know what I mean? Of course, every place got a hood. I was a hood, you know what I'm saying, hood baby. Yeah. Uh, I was born in San Francisco. I was raised a little bit in Hunters Point mm -hmm. uh, in San Francisco. Um, and then I moved to Fairfield, and then was raised in Sassoon or whatever. So you know, I got all the, you know, had all the temptations of, you know, what I'm saying, want to be a thug and all Fair. that. You know what I mean? So, but I got out of it as a young, at a young age or whatever. I had a different mindset than everybody else. I kind of seen what my future was before everybody else wanted to even attempt to see what their their future was. Jim and I began recording at the age of 11 alongside his brother after he bought a microphone, and the first track he ever made was called Made in China. In school, Gemini had a tough time fitting in. I was hella unpopular. I went to a rich school and it was just filled with people that had the nicest shoes, a lot of shoes, and they had the nicest clothes and stuff like that. It was all about who had the most money and who was the prettiest. When he was around 14 years old, Sage dropped out of school to pursue music full time. He chose the name Sage the Gemini in reference to his striking green eyes and his star sign. Throughout his teen years, he formed a group with his cousin called Tree Boys and released tracks independently, learning how to produce music and make his own beats along the way. He found minor success through MySpace when he released You Should Know around 2008 at the tender age of 18, which accumulated 3 million views and kickstarted his rap career. Later that year, he met I Am Sue, and the pair became very good friends, prompting Gemini to join Sue's HBK gang or Heartbreak gang. He grew to love the group as a family, and to this day, he remains a part of the crew. They're always teaching and looking out for me. They're hella smart. They always keep me from drifting into a negative situation, which could be somebody that's trying to use you. Gemini formed a huge part of the crew and worked closely with them over the next few years. They only really got their start three years after founding in 2011, and Sage produced extensively for the group. Around 2012, he earned his first official production credits with work on Smoothie Babies, Turned Up and Watch Your Mouth, as well as another song called Keisha. Over the next few years, he has alluded to producing for Omarion, various members of HB Gang, and his own music until he finally got his foot in the door around 2013. Technically, it started around 2012 with the single Gas Pedal, which he released independently. Now, speed up. Gas pedal. Gas pedal. Gas pedal. The song was very successful in the clubs and at schools. The song was so popular that it spawned a signature dance move that took off on vines and by the end of the year it had over 3 million views online. It was soon followed by an official video and the equally infectious red nose around 2013. Around 2013, these singles were officially released as the leading singles from his debut EP to be titled Gas Pedal EP and both songs charted. The first song went double platinum, while the latter went three times platinum. Gas Pedal was so popular that it even earned a remix by pop superstar Justin Bieber and both songs captured the attention of Republic Records, which eventually earned Sage's signing to the label. Hey, hold on, you won't forget it, babe. 
Mm-hmm. So you got an album out. Congratulations. Yeah, sure. How does it feel? You got Justin Bieber on the album. Man, that's a big accomplishment. That is. I mean, it was when he was a white artist. Now he's black, so it ain't the, <laughs> it ain't the same anymore. It used Wait, to be is a that big true? accomplishment. The following month, he dropped Gas Pedal EP, which performed well on the charts and spawned one more single titled Swerve. He's a nerd. I don't care. Say swerve. My name is Pico. Say swerve. They mad cause we own. Say swerve. After this, Sage began working on his debut EP. In addition to everything he was doing in 2013, Sage was also a producer behind the scenes. He produced for Smoothie Baby, D Mac, D Cannons, and Tyga. By the end of the year, he dropped his leading single for his debut album titled College Drop. 2014 was equally successful for Sage. He kept producing, and by March of that year, he dropped his debut album titled Remember Me. The album featured both of his platinum tracks and peaked at number 47 on the Billboard 200, eventually going gold. In addition to all of his previous singles, the album spawned another two, titled Down On Your Luck with the home wrecker August Alsina and Mac Down With Mr. F.A.B. Throughout the rest of the year, he featured on another eight tracks with artists like Kiriko Bangs and Kid Ink. But his two biggest tracks of that year were 2AM with Adrian Marcel and the instantly recognizable GDFR with Flo Rider. GDFR remains one of Sage's biggest features to date, with the song picking at number 8 in the Hot 100. The following year was 2015, and that's where most people say that Sage fell off. And I suppose you could say he fell off because he was no longer making major headlines for his music. Instead, he was working more behind the scenes. However, he began a very public relationship with Jordan Sparks, which many people consider to be a publicity stunt. I was doing this song, it was called Gasoline, and the beat and everything, I was just like, I want to put Sage Gemini on it. I'm a big fan of his. And then, like, um, like, she DM'd me, and she was like, yeah. Um, she she like, slid into your DMs first? No, it was not even like that. She That's was like, amazing. who can I contact so we can get a verse? And I was like, I was like, she <laughs> contact me. He produced the song Prince Charming for Derek King. He then did a couple of features and released three singles titled Don't You, Guantanamera with Trey Songs, and Good Thing with Nick Jonas. 2016 followed a similar pattern, but there was for sure some chaos mixed in there. He went back to producing, and as far as features go, he appeared on the track Hashtag B Day with Chris Brown and Tank. If you hold a God and walk a and on the solo front, he dropped just one single titled Now and Later, which was the leading single of his upcoming mixtape, Morse Code. And Now and Later was Gemini's first majorly successful track internationally. It hit charts across the world and earned him a gold certification in the US. Says the Gemini was always pretty smart when it came to marketing, and he added the song as the soundtrack for the sunglass feature on Snapchat. Plenty of major celebrities used the filter, ranging from Snoop Dogg to Kevin Hart to Khloe Kardashian, making Sage even more popular than before. Even though the Gemini was considered to be doing well in his life, 2016 was quite a different year for the rapper. He and Jordan Sparks broke up, and after posting a long and heartfelt message on Instagram begging her to return his calls, he later confirmed that the whole relationship was a publicity stunt. Everything was horrible. Like, was damn. She got my nerves. I want to stab her. Like, all this shit. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, she cool. She level headed. Whatever. But, you know, but she's not no regular person. Now, as if that wasn't crazy enough. In June of that same year, Sage was hit with even more intense accusations by a woman in California. She opened a case to sue the rapper, alleging that around 2016, he invited her to his house to watch a movie, but later sexually assaulted her. I won't go into the details because it's pretty graphic. However, she claimed that he infected her with genital herpes. Now when fans heard the news, their opinions were split. Some believe the woman was a cloud chaser and was using Sage's name to make more money, while others believe he actually did it. Nevertheless, after the lawsuit was announced through courthouse news, nothing else was ever mentioned about it. Now by around 2017, Gemini dropped his first mixtape called Morse Code. While Now and Later was the first single from the piece, it was followed by two more singles called Pilot and Reverse, neither of which charted. Sage then went back to production and also featured on tracks Game Time with Flo Rider 
and do it like me with TCTS. It's game time. Around this time, he welcomed a daughter named Layla Woods. And around 2018, Sage kind of plateaued, becoming less and less active than previous years. Gemini then went back to producing and dropped several non-charting album singles. These include Pull Over with Trina, No Exes with O3 Greedo, Busted with Chris Brown and others. 2019 was an even quieter year for Gemini. He only featured on Flo Rida's Snack and his own track Big Numbers. 2020 was somewhat similar. He produced for Tinashe on Rascal and his own solo track named Humble as well as Tick Tick Boom and others. Around 2021 he dropped Baby with Chris Brown while 2022 brought Numero Uno, What You Selling, Cinderella and Party in the Hills. But aside from dropping singles and occasionally producing, Gemini seems to be a really solid ghostwriter. He refuses to talk about everything he has worked on, but according to him, he has worked on major hits. A lot of people be like, Sage the Gemini fell off. But listen to this person, and I'll be like, I wrote that whole song. What you talking about? I just produced that. That's my tag in the front. Or I won't put my tag on the end and just let people beat themselves up. In essence, Sage the Gemini knows how to make hits. That's evident. However, Sage isn't getting the airplay that he once got. I personally think if he got a little bit more support from his label, he would probably be doing more numbers. Nevertheless, the man is still successful. He's still working as a ghostwriter. He's still producing and dropping songs. Today, he's super active in the music industry. He dropped a song this year called Saw With It. I think that's how you pronounce it. And on Spotify, he has 3.5 million monthly listeners. And his most listened to songs are Gas Pedal, Tick Tick Boom, Red Nose, Now and Later, and Butter. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Sage the Gemini in your opinion? Let me know down below. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace.